Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and as you're watching your heavyweight snow falling outside this morning, if you happen to be uh, in the area from uh, uh, central New Jersey uh, going north-south and then running up into the Hudson Valley and then extending eastward, especially over Long Island, uh, you watch the snow and then with one eye and then watch this for next week on the European with the other. And we're going to uh, back it up. <clears throat> this is the map. The upper air map for this evening, I, I want to point out here is the system that's going through now, and it's offshore and done by this evening, and it's, come, it's going off the New England coast. Here's the system that's going to make a storm off the southeast coast uh, over the weekend, and it moves fairly quickly by Saturday evening. Uh, you can see it right here, and you also can see uh, a weather system in the northern part of the jet stream that's coming through, and that's going to bring the high that's going to build down from Quebec. Uh, later Sunday into Monday. Now, now let's go to Sunday evening. Here's our low off the southeast coast. The upper low, the surface low is somewhere out here. Here is the in, in, intense upper air energy from the uh, weather system that is now uh, going to be approaching the Great Lakes uh, Sunday evening. Now, what happens? Here we are Monday evening. That intense energy dives southeastward into the Ohio Valley and, and forms what we call a cutoff low. In other words, basically forms its own, you know, forms a, a little vortex that's separate from the main jet stream flow. The coastal low uh, lifts up northeastward offshore, but because of all this energy that's being focused back here, this is being drawn back westward into uh, under the influence of its circulation. Then beyond this, that upper low moves down into Virginia. So now you have a, all this focused energy along the um, Virginia coast and, and off the Delaware coast of southern New Jersey. So there's another storm that forms uh, somewhere in here and moves to the northeast. So uh, then, of course, it just starts to lift up and out, and then we're done, and we, we get set for whatever happens beyond that. But Okay, so what does this all mean from a practical standpoint? Well, unfortunately, that's the really big puzzle that we have to put together because um, I'm going to overlay here the surface on the European, and you can see the intense low that's off the southeast coast. It's actually not that far off the southeast coast, and there you have the reflection of what's going on back through the Great Lakes. This is for um, Sunday evening, 7 o'clock, and now here's Monday evening at 7 o'clock. Now, I uh, posted on my European post uh, the snowfall map that uh, this shows and what the model is doing, and this is going back to what the European is, was showing um, a day or so ago, is that it throws back snow to the coast. And the reason why it does that, even though the low is so far out, uh, is that this upper low is exerting so much influence that it's essentially just pulling back moisture westward. Now, at the same time, this has got to do its own work, and it's trying to force a surface low uh, to where there's least resistance, and that's down in, in you can see all these pressure falls. Uh, the look of how the isobars are, are, are bagged out in Virginia and North Carolina, and that causes this second storm to form. Now, there's, there's a lot of practical forecast issues here that are at play that we uh, have to remember, and that is, the fact that there's only so much room in the atmosphere uh, for things to happen. And the first system here uh, robs some of the moisture that's available so that when the second one happens, it doesn't really have a whole lot for it to work on. So it becomes a problem in terms of forecasting because you're going to have to consider how much snow gets thrown back westward and how far westward with the first low. And then how much precip can you have from a practical nature with the second one? And there are other possibilities. We are seeing a another dance to the left. That is my dog who wants to go out and play in the snow. Hang on. And he's going to bark and ask me to come back in shortly. But um, one of the things <clears throat> that we're going to have to um, also consider is what if we get another dance that's further to the left? In other words, what if this surface low winds up being, say, here? Then you're talking the back edge of snows on Monday perhaps being pushed back further west along the coast. And then having that storm closer, what is the implication 
with what's going on behind it. Is that going to force the development even further south and possibly make for a non-event? I will say this. Uh, this is a very bizarre setup. I, I don't quite recall seeing something quite like this. Um, were it not for this lead system with all the energy that's dropping down into the Ohio Valley, we would probably be sitting with a, a major, a really big single storm off our coastline with um, a, another, you know, massive snowfall and blizzard, like blizzard conditions. But um, we don't have that. We have this complicating factor with this lead system and the second one. So right now, I if you, I, I had to literally forecast off what the European was showing. And, and by the way, the GFS has the same idea. If you look at today's GFS run, which I'm going to switch to um, real quick here, if you look at the GFS, it's it's not really all that different. Um, it, it has a similar, it attempts a similar idea in trying to draw back snow westward. And you can see on the last frame here that uh, it is further east than the European. It allows for a little more room with the second system, so it develops some precip. But you can see how lacking it is. You can you think with all this energy going on that there would be a lot of snow and precipitation happening, but the problem is that you've got this thing out here essentially robs the atmosphere of what is available for it to tap, and there's not enough time in between the two for the atmosphere to essentially recharge, so it just deals with whatever it has. But what if this is further left? Does this become further south? I, I think there's just too much at play here to put this down in a, 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 from a practical forecast standpoint for the time being. So we'll wait to see what the day runs, if this westward trend continues, and what it means uh, for the long-range forecast for next week. But Obviously, uh, it's a very interesting and fascinating situation we're dealing with, and I'm going to end it here because my dog wants to come back inside. So have a good day, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about this more later.